Well, we've always felt like Matterhorn would uh, would relish the mile and a half distance. Uh, I thought he ran a sneaky good race in the Peter Pan when he was fourth. Uh, closed pretty well, galloped out strongly afterwards. I uh, feel like, you know, that the, the great equalizer of the Belmont is the distance, and we think he'd handle it well. It's Harpoon and Matterhorn. These two nip and tuck for the lead. Two Pletcher runners, one, two, with a furlong to go here. And then it's Wolf Den third. Harpoon and Matterhorn nip and tuck as they come down to the finish. Matterhorn on the outside and Harpoon at the rail and the nose of Matterhorn on the wire first. Out as all cash came right back into his lap. Well, that happened on the rail. It was Long Station a little wider who seizes the initiative. Staying on down the outside, Matuzak from a mile back inside the final furlong. Long Station on the outside, Matuzak. Matuzak, Long Station between these two. Matuzak is green, but he takes the lead. Racing the line, it is Matuzak. Matuzak and Sean Bridgman to win on debut. Long Station followed by Ring Weekend, Sami and Lucky in the Run and All Cash next. And it is Wildcat Red, General A-Rod, East Hall, Pablo Del Monte on the far outside. Down to the last 16th, General A-Rod, Wildcat Red. These two continue to go at it. Wildcat Red, General A-Rod, head and head, bobbing heads. Either of the two could have won it. Woodfield Springs is in third, then Storming Enti, who's lost ground into the stretch. Final furlong of the Transylvania. Metal count with the lead. Chased by Pocotza and Woodfield Springs. At the line, it is metal count to win the Transylvania Stakes for Robbie Alvarado. I thought uh, Commissioner ran very well in the Peter Pan, which historically has been a good prep for the Belmont. He's uh, a son of AP Indy out of a touch gold mare. Both AP Indy and touch gold won the Belmont. So I feel like we got a lot of pedigree uh, behind us and a horse that's improving and getting better that we've always felt like a mile and a half would suit very well. Well, I mean, for, for us, Belmont Stakes is a very significant race uh, every year, but Anytime there's a triple crown at stake, I think it uh, not only is one of the most exciting events in horse racing, it's one of the most exciting events in all of sports. Um, the historical significance, the difficulty of it to, to accomplish is, uh, is truly a great moment in, in uh, the sporting world. They're in the final furlong here, and in the ninth furlong, it is Commissioner up to take the lead. Commissioner and Super Lucky, Super Lucky comes back at him. Commissioner and Super Lucky in a photo. A huge margin back to the rest of the field. 20 lengths or more to the third horse, either gaining ground or Lieutenant Shawnee O.
we skipped the Preakness because, you know, running back in two weeks, if you're not going to be, you know, uh, the winner of the Derby trying for the Triple Crown, at that point it becomes, you know, a real evaluation of what's best for your horse. And running back in two weeks, I couldn't conceive was in the best interest. And, and speaking with Mr. Riggio, we decided to wait for the Belmonts. It's five weeks in between. And uh, he's doing terrific. Uh, so, uh, it, so far, it's, that's worked out. A mile and a half is a totally different race from the first two legs of the Triple Crown. I don't think there's anybody in the race that is going to say before the race or even after the race that a mile and a half on the dirt is their strong suit. We're all kind of testing the envelope to see how effective we can be running a mile and a half. The pace scenario is different. Uh, even the, the closes, which you would think a mile and a half would be right up their alley, well, they will have already run a mile and a quarter when they're expected to close and fire that fast last quarter. And sometimes that mile and a quarter takes its toll and there isn't a lot of uh, fuel in their reserve to run up the stretch. So it's, it's a bit more of a rider's race. The, the first half mile is critical. Only Secretariat can go half in 47 or faster and continue on to win. I mean, and I'm not sure we have any Secretariats in this field. So uh, our horse is a bit of a grinder. He keep, he's a really brave horse, and he, he offers everything he has every, every time we, we ask him for it and every time we run. So I think it's a great opportunity. He's doing terrific. He's trained great, and all systems tell us uh, that we're supposed to run. The three of them are heads apart as they come for the quarter pole in the Gotham. In trouble at the rail. Samron on the outside. Uncle Cy battles on in between horses. Three quarters went in one, 12 and one. And it's Samrod and Uncle Cy and Samrod, Uncle Cy and in trouble. Three of them are right together as they come down for the 16th pole. Samrod, Uncle Cy, in trouble. None of them giving way. They come down for the finish line. It's Samrod narrowly and Samrod will stay. Stay undefeated! To remain in the contest they make the turn in and it's tapped to the street to the outside who has the lead against the rail is royal sky down the outside commanding curve and commanding curve now takes the lead and he's been followed by harbour bound it changes now inside the final furlong it's commanding curve and sean bridgeman the only pursuer now is harbour bound the others are just spots on the horizon as they race towards the line commanding curve a double for dallas stewart Ride on Curlin, three quarters of a length. Smiling Charlie is in second. From the back of the pack, Rivers Run Deep is trying to get a minor placing, but there's no doubt about the winner. It's Ride on Curlin, who was a winner every step of the way. And he finishes the job by two. Smiling Charlie second. Rivers Run Deep from well, well out of it for third. Fourth went to IC back. He certainly has the pedigree and he has the body type. Do you see the mile and a half as any problem? Well, yeah, it's, a it's a difficult thing to know because we have never tried it. But I mean, he moves like a horse who should go further. And as you said, he's got the pedigree to go further. And we're going to try it and we'll see what happens. How about the Belmont? How would you like to see him position there? Or is that just a matter of how the pace uh, sets up? Oh, absolutely. You know, my deal is to try to bring him to uh, the Belmont as soon as possible and as fit as possible. And everything else, you know, Joel is running him, he's a top class jockey. I want to let him worry about the race and I'm going to worry about the horse. Coming into the final furlong here of the Peter Pan. And he kicks away again with three length lead. Commissioner, I wish you well and Matterhorn all left in the muddy wake of Tonalist.
who glides under the wire at the end. He won by three and a half. Commissioner finishing second. It was close for third between Irish Well and Matterhorn. Well, we skipped the Preakness uh, coming out of the Derby. Not that he was all that knocked out or anything like that, but he, he, he hit his passions pretty bad, and we didn't really, I kind of thought the reason was because of what he had a rough trip, but there was still a little uncertainty uncertainty there, and so we left him out of the Preakness to take dead name on the, on the Belmont. Oh, I, mean, I don't know. We're going to we're gonna try to run a nice even race and just hope, hopefully our horse handles the distance better than, than the others. I mean, that's, what, that's how you have to, we try to prepare him as, as best we can. I mean, I, I don't know how any other way to look at it than that. Social inclusion tested like he's never been tested before. Chivarelli down inside. Samrat as wicked strong comes gobbling up ground down the center of the racetrack. And here is Wicked Strong who sweeps to the lead in the final furlong. And Wicked Strong wins it going away.